welcome to Gardening in 58 North. In this video I'm going to give you guys an update on my larch bonsai tree here. So this is a hybrid larch, which is a, basically a, a cross between the European and the Japanese larch. So I've had this as a bonsai for a little while, and now it's just starting to leaf up ready for spring. So this is the perfect time to do any work on it. The tricky thing with the larch is they have so many little needles. It's very hard to wire in any of the branches once the needles have fully grown because they're so covered in needles it's hard to get the wires on without covering up the needles. So it's best to wire them up whilst they're leafless and this, as this is a deciduous conifer um, it's best to do that in the winter time. And then the other reason is this time of year is the best time to, to do any kind of root pruning. And because the reason for that is with the, the larch trees here when they're in full leaf in summer if you disturb the roots, they could really quite stress them. They got all those needles that they have to look after. They'll lose a lot of moisture through the needles and they won't be able to uptake that from the roots if the roots are damaged. So it's a good time to, um, to do it whilst there's no needles. But if you do do it in the middle of winter, the other problem you have is all the energy from these plants gets stored in the trunk and in the roots over winter. So if you were to do root pruning in the middle of the winter, you'd really quite severely weaken the plant because you take away a lot of its energy reserves. So the best time to do it is when it's like this, just starting to bud up, because it's sent up all its energy reserves into the stem, into the beginning of the, the needles, but the needles aren't developed enough yet that they're going to be transpiring too much and it's going to evaporate too much. So I'll probably do the root pruning first, because uh, when I'm moving around doing the root pruning, I'll probably disturb some of the branches, and so if I have any wire in then it would disturb it. So first of all, I've got some wires here that I need to take out. These are the ones that I just put in to keep it secure in the pot when they first planted it. It should be easy enough to take out, hopefully. There might be a bit of resistance if the, the roots are growing around the wires at all. That's the wires out. I think it's been about a couple of years since I've done a root pruning of this, so it's probably going to be pretty bad, I would expect. And I can feel it's quite solid in there. It doesn't help that there's a lip on this uh, bonsai pot, and that's going to make it more difficult. So it looks like I'm going to have to tease it out with a spoon or a knife. So that's it out and it was quite difficult. So the first issue that I can see is I've actually got some vine weevil larvae and this has been a problem on a few plants on my balcony. And I can see at least one of them in here, I think two. So I'm gonna to have to deal with these because these are gonna eat all the roots off. I'll show you what the vine weevils look like. So you can see them on my hand there, a couple of little larvae. What they do is they go in the, in the soil and they eat all the roots on your plant. So your plant just seems to get weaker and weaker and you're not sure why. And what happens is all the roots have been eaten off by these vine weevil larvae. You don't really know it's happening until it's too late. And once all the roots are gone, the plant just weakens it's too much and eventually dies. So I'm going to have to dispose of these. I'm going to be quite careful when I'm looking through this compost. I need to pick out any more that have been in here. Because as I say, they will eat all off, off all the roots. And that will really cause a lot of problems to the plants. So I'm going to rake out these roots because they're going to be quite congested around the edges. You can see it. You don't want roots spiraling around the edge of the pot because they're not going to do much good. So I'm just going to loosen them. And as I'm doing that, you can see there's a lot more grubs that are starting to appear. So I'm hoping that hasn't caused too much damage. But I've already had a couple of plants completely killed by vine weevil larvae this year. Um, so we'll just have to see how this does. But it's really not looking good, unfortunately. There should be a lot more roots in the middle here. And there's really not a lot of roots going on. All the roots are around the edge. Um, you would expect it more in the middle, even if it has become root bound and spiralled around. But those, um, those larvae have really eaten a lot of these roots off. So I'm starting to get a slightly better root shape here. You can see basically all this stuff in the bottom is what's been spiralling around. And that's caused a big issue. Uh, this bit in the middle is where there should be more roots, but I think they've been cut off by the the vine weevils and then this middle area is, is not a bad shape of roots and there's still quite a few fine fibrous ones so I'm quite happy with that root system but all this stuff needs to be cut off all these big strong roots around the edge they're not really going to help the plant they, they're just useful in the wild when it's windy to provide stability but they're not going to absorb much moisture or nutrients so I'm just going to get my secateurs I'm just going to cut off these thick roots and then I'm just going to continue raking out the remaining compost Carefully looking for any more of the vine weevil larva. So 
So I'm going to be placing this back in the original pot. You can see that's quite a lot of material taken off. Uh, the roots are a bit of a better shape. It isn't, it's, it isn't saying that we have got a few larger roots under here, but that's going to be a little bit tricky to remove. I'm probably going to remove a bit of this bit by bit each year. I have removed some of the larger roots there. Um, and there's a couple more I can take just a little bit more off without causing too much damage to the plant. And removing those thicker roots will encourage some of the smaller, finer roots to, to read up the better, better and we'll have a better root system. So what I'm going to do now is pot this up inside its old pot. First of all, I'm going to make sure it's anchored because it's going to be quite loose without the, uh, the old roots that it used to have keeping it in place. I have checked quite thoroughly for any vine weevils. At this time of year, the vine weevils will all be in a larval stage. There won't be any eggs or anything like that. The life cycle of the uh, vine weevil is that they're adults during the summertime and during the rest of the year they're just larva and it's a larva that causes all the problems. The adults generally just nibble a bit on the leaves. They don't normally cause too much damage when it comes to the actual uh, plant apart from the leaves. So I'm just going to secure this in here. So I'm just loosely securing it with the wires for now. And I'll just tighten it at the bottom by twisting. So that will provide a little bit of support and then the rest will be coming from the compost itself. So that's planted back up with the soil. So I'm just going to do some work now on the stems. There's not actually much pruning that needs to be done because I did I think, a bit of pruning in the autumn and also over the summer. So pruning wise it looks okay. There's a few old needles I need to take off. What happened late last summer is I had a few, quite a few caterpillars on my balcony and they were using these needles to create like a cocoon around themselves. So they kind of stitched them together with a type of silk. So that's why some of these, um, there's, a little, there's a few patches where these needles have stuck on. And because they're held together with silk, they, they haven't come off naturally. So I just need to remove them by hand. Um, looking at some of these stems, some of them are a little bit longer than I'd like. So I'm going to uh, take off a couple of these. What I'm wanting is it to look like a, a big old tree. The bottom will be completely bare eventually, but I'm keeping that for now to encourage a bit of taper. And then it's going to slowly, um, wide, the branches are basically going to be quite narrow at the top and widen as they come out to the bottom. So there's a couple ones here and all these here, I would like to have side branches about this long in the future. This one is doing really nicely. You can see there's lots of side branches on that. Also this one at the top here, got lots of nice side branches. There's a few here that have side branches, but they're very long and thin. So I'm just going to nip them off just about halfway or a bit less than halfway, just to encourage some further branching on them. The very low down branches, as I say, I'm leaving, just let them grow as large as they can. And that will encourage some more taper on the bottom. And looking around here, that's just about it for those branches, I think. The ones at the top here, they do need to be shortened slightly because I don't want these to get too overly vigorous because what tends to happen is the ones on the top grow the fastest because that's where the natu naturally the plant's trying to get the most light. So you just I just have to keep an eye on that and uh, reduce their length slightly. And then also do you need to try and get this leader back in. Uh, I had to cut out the top because the leader had become far too big and strong. So I'm going to try and train this one up into a new leader. So I'll just position that up with the wires that are existing on it. Checking the wires, most of them are actually quite loose. There's one here that just needs to be loosened slightly. As the stems grow, the, uh, the, the wires become tighter and can start digging into the stem. So what I'm going to do on this is uh, loosen these off. Any of them are too tight. This one can have to be removed because I'm, I'm quite happy now with the, the shape of that one. This one here does need to come up slightly, so I'll leave that one wired but I will just loosen it so that it doesn't cut into the stem. But I'm happy with most of the branches, they're all about the right kind of angle I was looking for. They're just wanting them to come out kind of horizontal to the main trunk. The ones at the bottom, I'm not worried because these are going to be cut off completely in the future as they're just there for the taper on the trunk. So turning that around, I'm quite happy with how they're all looking at the moment. I'll be interested to see how this branches out as time, comes, as time goes on. This one here, this side branch is a little bit big, so I'm just going to nip that right back there. But apart from that, I think that's all the pruning I really need to do. I'll probably need to do quite a lot of pruning over the summer. I find this plant is that this plant is very vigorous and grows really well. But it'll be interesting to see how it does with all that but damage from the vine weevils. I've actually collected quite a few larvae. I managed to find eight vine weevil larvae on this plant. 
So that's quite a lot of uh, material that must be needing off the roots. I'm going to do a treatment on my whole balcony this year because I say it's actually killed off one of my fuchsia plants and they're just going to continue weakening the other plants and killing them off. So I'm just going to do a treatment on all my pots, make sure all the vine weevils are cleared up. Same with this one, do a treatment on this, this bonsai. So that's all for this video, just a very quick short update on my, um, my larch here. It should come into leaf quite nicely soon. What I will do is put it on a really shady part of the balcony because, because its roots have been disturbed by me doing some root pruning and repotting it, but also with all the roots that it's lost from the vine weevil, it's gonna really struggle to, to, to provide enough water to the needles that are growing through. So if it's in the full sunlight, it'll probably dry out too fast and it'll die off. Or if you, even if the whole plant doesn't die, it might have to kill off a couple of the ends of the branches to survive. So what I'll do is I'll put it in the shady area on the balcony, that way it'll be nice and cool. Wait until the needles are fully developed. Once they're fully developed, and I'm quite happy that the roots have stabilized again and grown into the compost, I'll then put it back on the, on the sunny position I have in the balcony, and it should do quite nice. Apart from the problems with the vine weevils, I'm actually quite happy with how it's looking. There's definitely quite a lot of thickening of the trunk here. It's looking quite nice. Um, as I say, I'll just continue to thicken up the trunk and develop the branch structure a bit better as it goes along.